All right, we are live. Hello, everyone, YouTube, peace and blessings to all the star family out there. This is going to be a dialogue with Kathleen McLaughlin about Time Lord techniques. And I'm Michael Hardigan of One Sky Astrology. And uh, Kathleen, why don't you um, say a few words about yourself? Time Lord Techniques, anything on your mind. Hello and welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much for having me. This has been a true blessing to um, explore in uh, unique techniques that right. we can apply. So a little bit about myself. I practice true sky astrology. However, I have been in the process of learning ancient techniques such as Hellenistic techniques and Vedic and Egyptian techniques, and then apply those to our true sky chart. Sure. And I find that these techniques still work and are absolutely applicable to our life, right? And a big part of my practice is I do not perform predictive techniques readings right. my whole point of the reading is to empower you because mm -hmm. a lot of people come to an astrologer or tarot reader because something's going on in their life and maybe they need a little guidance and my whole goal is to provide tools and an explanation of energetic manipulation mm -hmm. and how we can take our power back Mm -hmm. And then they get to manifest the world that suits them, right? Ooh, battery going low. Mm -hmm. So I would like to give a shout out to our mutual friend, my dear friend, Francesca. She's the one that first dropped, right? She's the one that dropped. Um, there's a YouTube channel called The Astrology Podcast. Here's his book, Chris Brennan. I oh, did right. not invent this technique. This man learned ancient Greek. He spent, I believe, 10 years um, learning ancient Greek. So mm -hmm. he could basically take ancient texts and then translate it. And he worked with um, scholars that were well-versed in ancient Greece because mm -hmm. he wanted to make sure nothing got lost in translation because as we know, and when you understand different languages, they can be very different, right? So he really did his research. And even though he performs tropical astrology, mm -hmm. I use a lot of his technique, which mm -hmm. is the whole house system. Right. And also um, a little bit of sect. But this Time Lord technique is massively, uh, it was mind-blowing. Right. Right, so right. let's let's take a look at a chart. Let's use mine, for example, just to give a little bit of. Absolutely, I'd like to unpack a couple a couple things just before we get into chart work, like Hellenistic. Mm -hmm. Can you break that down for someone who's not really familiar with what, like the Hellenistic era was a historical period, but what was it marked by? Like, could you could you give a little context? So the Hellenistic period was a time in ancient Greece where they it was before the onset of christianity mm -hmm. and they actually our sky looked very different mm -hmm. so we didn't have like right now we in our perspective we use 12 houses mm -hmm. they didn't have 12 constellations in their ecliptic Mm -hmm. The sky was much closer due to precession of the equinox, right? Mm -hmm. So when they saw the planet Mars and Jupiter and Venus, it was actually a lot closer. Mm -hmm. Your sky was much more compact. And at the time, we could even take it further. If you look at Henry VIII's chart, which in uh, what's beautiful is in this book, is he actually can, they still have access to these ancient charts. Mm -hmm. And when you're looking at Henry VIII's chart, which is clearly not in the Hellenistic period, however, there's only eight houses. Oh, I because see. what happens is birthing through our Milky Way, the Milky Way, right? It, it's like a black hole. 
and it's birthing new constellations. Like a lot of people don't include a fucus into their chart. Mm -hmm. Well, if you go far enough back in history, it didn't exist mm -hmm. because it's continuously birthing new constellations due to precession of the equinox. So this is why it's critical that a, you have an understanding of astronomy. You have understanding of the beautiful orchestra that our planets, how they work, the energies, how they work together. We are not performing anything that is by any standards new. Mm -hmm. We are piggybacking on ancient techniques right. and applying it to our modern day. And right. that's why I really like to encompass Hellenistic perspective and techniques with Vedic techniques as well, mm -hmm. because especially Vedic techniques have been unchanged for over 5,000 years. Yeah. Why would we not right. lean on that ancient? There's a history there. There is knowledge there right. and we are not doing anything new. Right. So yeah. let's respect where this energy and education started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we get to carry it forward into our, you know, descendants. It's pretty yeah, good. that's, that's a beautiful torch to carry. So, so I'm hearing, I'm hearing in, in that uh, one thing, that, one word that really stands out, which is Egypt. So this goes back when you say ancient, maybe some people are thinking like, Oh, I don't know, uh, you know, 2000 or so years ago, like Claudius Ptolemy, that was ancient. But when you invoke Egypt, we're talking about an antiquity that we don't pre dynastic even really even understand. Yeah, we don't, you know, we don't. So, um, similarly in the Vedic traditions, there are the oral histories, which just so far predate like written Sanskrit that we, we don't, we just lose it in the mists of time. We don't know how far back the, the knowledge goes, but um, time Lord techniques. I, I want to, I want to get your chart up on the screen. That was, that was yeah. one thing I just wanted to kind of, I just wanted to kind of bring in. I didn't know if a lot of people were familiar with what Hellenistic meant or what it implied or what it was, what it was to you. It was important there. Sure. And, you know, vocabulary is really important. And another thing I'd like to say, mm -hmm. when we're looking into historical practices, we have to get rid of our modern perspective. Mm. Yeah, Life, that's a good point was very much the same but also very different they were very much connected to the earth they lived within they understood the cycles of the life right and yeah. the moon and the sun and believe it and they were they were so intelligent because they understood how everything was connected and the power of unity yeah yeah, I agree. I agree. Our, our ancient ancestors, um, they did a lot of things that we still don't know how to do or how they did. And uh, I think we can put Egypt uh, squarely in that category. Um, yeah, absolutely. But I think I think they were they were amazing. I think when we when we think of our ancient ancestors, a lot of us think of more primitive like oh somewhere between the bronze age and here cave people got you know prefrontal cortex and, 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 and you know started starting building cell phones but it's not even it's not, those people not to interrupt you but even even those people they were more feeling than thinking mm -hmm. and the fact that we're alive today mm -hmm. gives them their credit because had they not been there, we wouldn't be. We wouldn't be here, right? Oh, right? I mean, there it is. Homage to the ancestors. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Which, these are the shoulders that we stand on. Their DNA. You hold um, fourteen generations in your current DNA of your ancestors. Hmm. Seven generations from the mother. Seven generations from the father, and then you will affect the choices we are making on a day-to-day -day will affect 14 generations forward. Hmm. It's a beautiful a powerful thought. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. That's why we really, you know, it's interesting. We can get lost in that sauce, and that's a whole another conversation. Oh yeah, those are other conversations for a different time. I mean, I'm, 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 I, I don't have children, and I probably won't. But I, but even there's like hundredth monkey theory that once I figure something out, it's out there. It's in the ethers. Like then other people are have more access to it. Like once, uh, once just one being conquers something. Um, that that's that's out there, and that you know we all make progress. They're they're genetic, and it again another conversation for a different time. But yeah. you are you are you were asking me to get your chart up on the screen to show uh, yeah. to show Let's your chart so that we can get um, some perspective on a what is a birth chart just for those who don't practice astrology and then also to give a little bit of context to these abstract concepts that we're talking about because i'm a visual learner and um we can talk about this stuff all we want so if you uh so this is my birth chart here we go yeah we're finally there i had a little bit of a hiccup in them and in that yeah that happened so let me give a little bit of background so when we're born we are a spaceship for lack of a better term that houses our spiritual being in that spaceship we have 12 houses that provide different functions and provide different energetic and we can take it from the intrinsic level to the extrinsic right we could take your whole life and and take it around the dance floor basically so with this chart um if you put your cursor so when i was born i came into this world when taurus constellation was active in the sky every right. day our planet rotates so the entire ecliptic from morning till the till the sun comes up mm. right so that's when people are talking about your ascendant that means mm -hmm. the time that you were born and the constellation that was active in the sky. That's the eastern horizon. This this signifies the eastern horizon, or in some charts you see it. Uh, you know they would bring they would bring that ninety degrees to to this point, and and then the ascendant would be somewhere in the first house. But the ascendant is the point in which the local horizon is is found in a chart which which is another way of saying that this is sort of underground if you're looking at it and this this would be the visible heavens so just kind of explaining uh for everyone uh Absolutely. you know generally speaking what you're looking at right so if the my sun is rising in taurus which mm. is like like you said that's the eastern horizon so that would be mm. equivalent to when the sun's rising and mm. then my sun sets in a fucus and scorpio which would be like right now you are equivalent to my seventh house mm. because you are opposite of me so whenever mm. you're sitting down and it's also um we could also say it to where taurus is my body and my person and a lot of people see me, view me as a Scorpio. It's pretty wild. We can oh, we can get lost in the sauce and that whole concept. But yes, sure. everything below the horizon happens in your personal life right. as like your private life. Mm -hmm. And everything above the horizon is what's in your external life. Right. When you leave the house, where do you go? Right? That's another way to look at it. Yeah, now, I, love that. I love that. With the Time Lord, everything happens in a cycle of 12. 12 is actually just 13 is a very magical number, but it's a very different energy. But 12 is also a very sacred number. So can I can I jump in here because I know something mm -hmm. that I think this is a perfect time to introduce, something we've been we've Absolutely. been connecting on. You and I do astrology the the same way, which is that we use the even sign, or sorry, the the actual sky, and we don't use even even signs or or even houses. We do whole sign, whole sign house system with the living sky, or AKA constellational or true sidereal or whatever have you. 
And that that's I love that. I love that that we've both that that's the way it talks to us. And when we when we talk about your first house, we're talking about Taurus. And people know that because we, they watch this channel and they know that I'm a 13 sign astrologer and we know that you're a 13 sign astrologer and I just want to I just want to introduce this right now for people who are like, "Well, wait, how are you a how how does there's 13 signs and you're talking about 12 houses and i and 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 you do this too take scorpio and a fucus as kind of one complex house one very very deep complex energy about transformation rejuvenation and healing death and rebirth so on yes. how that, what a beautiful way to say it cool cool thanks i think that sums up what i wanted to convey um yeah. so so in other words there'd be second third fourth fifth sixth seventh your seventh house i would read it as scorpio a fucus uh eighth house ninth house tenth house eleventh and twelfth house so it does work with 12 houses and 13 signs i just wanted to to put that out there oh i love no and i appreciate that um Thanks. i love this collaboration because you and i in it and we're going to get to this pardon the noise um you and i have a unique because of our ages mm -hmm. and and we're going to get to that in a minute uh, so charts the combination of our ages and our charts put us in an opposite perfection year this year right exactly every year That's because every year right our, you and i are yeah, just in, right? in 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 uh what's it called uh mutual distribution <laughs> we're just, i'm where you're not yeah so, yeah you are and and we have to understand too that there's a harmony and a synergy that happens and so mm -hmm. so when you were so your zero year would mm -hmm. start at your ascendant right. then on your first birthday you would go to your second house ruler mm -hmm. right then on your third birthday, what is what does that mean let's let's take because i think everyone can extrapolate where you're going but in the second year what the second house ruler the ruler of gemini would be mercury so what does that mean in the second year mercury is activated uh right so let's take a look let's step back a little bit so when these annual perfections are happening it means that equivalent house the energy in that house is going to dominate your life for example gotcha. that first year you're all mm -hmm. about in your body because mm -hmm. you're growing right yeah, yeah, yeah that second year you're now walking around your family's home and getting to know who your family dynamics are mm -hmm. right yeah. that third year of life now you're getting to know your cousins if you have siblings mm -hmm. maybe a little bit of preschool action mm -hmm. right your fourth house so the house so the house comes too not just the sign not just the room so so the, we pull both in to, to understand both exactly and okay. then you have to look at where the ruler of that house is right. that because the energy of that rulership is mm -hmm. going to be a major impact you have to look at where they're sitting in your natal chart. This right. is a very complex technique. So I'm going to do my best to really break it down in the most simplest mm, because yeah, it, it, it truly, yeah. it not only. I got lost. Know, I got lost looking into this. I was like, well, that's a lot. And I, and I, because uh, like I said, I've never been, uh, I've never been uh, trained in perfections or Hellenistic astrology or any any of this stuff. So this this is new, in a lot of ways, new to me. But I know that all the complexities there's there's a simple mechanism at the core of it. And I know I know that you could probably help everyone to understand the the simplicity that's driving. This. That's, so I, I want to step out of the way, but at the same time, I, I have all these questions I'm trying to. Oops. Oh, and I, I'm really stoked because, it, you know, there's things that um, my brain performs without even articulating that I'm making these connections. So I appreciate mm -hmm. that you're like, let's take it step by step because I've mm -hmm. and honestly, I wasn't formally trained. But mm -hmm. when Francesca, um, she sent me a link to Chris Brennan's video on it, then I went and purchased his book. Mm -hmm. I spent three years collecting data mm. because I'm a, I'm a nerd. I'm a geek and I love oh, data. Right. Great. And, and um, the beautiful thing is, is that it, this isn't a, 
life is about small moments yeah. that lead up to big moments. And the great thing is, is it really helps you understand um, how to work with our life and how to understand what we're going through in this age of our birth year. Right. So what happens is of, from your of, birthday to birthday, right? you are going to have this house affect your theme of the year. Right. And that happens in the cycle of, of, of 12. Correct. So, so at 12 and 24 and 36 and 48, this, this kind of, you start to see a pulse. You see, you see this themes. That's interesting. That's so and, interesting. Yeah, yeah, and every and then you get to see that growth, right? So we have to understand that this wheel is quite dynamic. Mm -hmm. This isn't just a it's it's almost like a portal and it, mm -hmm. and it you can it, it's like that spiral that keeps moving outward. It is. Yeah. And it, it's very um cyclic in our life and it talks about our themes. Yeah. Yeah. So somebody who's in their ascendant sign. Mm. So at 24, oh, right. that's when you're getting a whole new identity as a grown up, mm. right? Mm -hmm. We think, you know, in, in the United States, 18, you're an adult, but it's not at 18. I didn't know a lot of stuff, but oh, by the God. time I was 24, right. I was like ready to change to this next whole cycle of 12 years yeah 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 i can feel that 24 like being 24 36 as a multiple of 12 it just feels like it's like oh that's a multiple of 12 year and i don't think we associate that consciously but it, it does there does like 12 is a very sacred number it's it's not just because it's easy and divisible but there's there's you know 12 is a powerful number yeah the, and the universe has these techniques um mm that really crack open how we can it's a way to understand our limited perspective of the universe we'll never know right we yeah. only know a, yeah. a drop but the cool thing <laughs> right. is to, to make sure you're you're open so again i do not practice predictive mm. astrology because where's the magic in that how mm. it, everything worked out to the way we expected it to be how mm -hmm. boring would that be right so where's the magic is in the unknown that's where truly yeah. we are really living so some, I some of the hellenistic astrologers they were pretty deterministic weren't they and and this is often used as a predictive technique to say when will these planets be activated like if if venus signifies marriage in a chart then people will go oh i'll use a time lord technique to discover when will venus mature or activate or, or or you know and and what i'm hearing from you is there's and this is this is a theme across astrology you can you can do you can do the spreadsheet work with it and you can get a date you can get or you can do the sort of psychological or depth and psyche in the greek right to the greek meant soul as you can do the soul work you know you can do the psychological work with it and i'm hearing you say it, it may work as techniques but it works as, as as an empowering tool beyond just uh you know uh like animal acceptance of your fate kind of exactly and for me it's like so one of the things that I, um, when I'm doing a chart and I can see, I take a look at where, what cycle that person's in. Yeah. And this is a great time to take your power back and mm. say, okay, well this, I turned 51 this year. Right. I am in a fourth house perfection. Right. So 48, 49, 50, 51. So you're in a Leo year just just quickly kind of showing people how they can figure this out quickly what year exactly. are you in? right so you're in and a fourth so the house of, leo year okay and so the ruler of leo is the sun yes which is funny because it's sitting in my 10th house looking at my fourth house 
And yeah. we have to understand you're going to get the wherever the ruler, whoever's sitting in that house mm -hmm. is going to impact you. Where that ruler sits and the constellation and the house that that ruler sits in mm -hmm. is going mm -hmm. to affect that house and mm -hmm. the energy mm -hmm. that you have that year. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Then we and, have to look at yeah. where those planets, so the ruler of my 10th house, because that's mm -hmm. where my son is sitting, who's mm -hmm. hanging out with my son, who's who's having that party in that house is how I like to break it down. Right. And then where are they currently? And what okay. cycle are they in currently? Sure, sure, sure. So like a transit graph, like what they rule and where they are now and what's going on. It all, it all comes into a holistic expression. Exactly. And I like to look at it like a symphony mm -hmm. because no planet ever is working on its own, right? Mm -hmm. There's always right. going to be, I call it the flavor, right? Mm -hmm. So the flavor of my sun power is sitting in Aquarius, which I use um, the older rulerships. Oh, okay. So for okay. me, it would the ruler of my son is Saturn. Well, right. where's my Saturn sitting? Right mm -hmm. in Taurus. Right. Guess who's hanging out with my son in Aquarius, which is Venus. Mm -hmm. So that means, and I like to look at these is. Um, like I use that spaceship analogy, yeah. who's the master of my helm? Mm -hmm. Venus, but she's also co-piloted mm -hmm. by Saturn. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I will always look from the lens mm -hmm. of a venal, Venusian, Satyrian mm -hmm. lens, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. let's yeah. now take into account, then you, like, where these planets are sitting so i'm heavily impacted by saturn even in my son's house rulership for this year yeah because my son is sitting in the house of saturn right. in the star water um with with venus so sun is always wrapped up in part of the part of the major kind of umbrella expression of energy of of, of your life for me for you and, right. the, and for that's you. why everybody's perspective is very different oh, sure. and sure. also all these transits that we're learning about you know we have to step back and my consciousness and perception is going to and my reality is mm. very different than yours Absolutely. and what's going to happen for me is going to be very different from yours and that's what the beauty is we're that's what's making me understand how magical we all are if mm -hmm. all we cooked with was salt and pepper right. how boring would that be why not use the cumin the paprika and the tarragon right like oh yeah 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 you there's a magic even, to this even, and, yeah it's right? beautiful i love i love that i love that and i love that you can just it doesn't take far from that point to step out or kind of get a bird's eye perspective and see how it all fits together all the time and everyone's inner world different as we all are is reflecting the outer world in its own way and as many takes on this or kinds of people as there are and there are a lot of kinds of people man there's just one thing happening you know that is a very that is like a, a core uh, point of security for me, like in a cosmic sense, you know, and and these time lord techniques are kind of giving insight into how, like the the sort of one thing that we have out there, you know, planets moving around, is is reflected in is reflected in our inner experience because most people go right to transits or progressions for the inner experience but this this is talking about something totally different something that just naturally something that just naturally progresses from one year to the next and so so at 51 having a fourth house year have 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 sun in aquarius or have fourth house things happened to you do you have anything you want to share as like it's so how is 
funny you bring that up. Um, I have just moved into a new apartment. So my birthday's in March. Mm -hmm. I got a new apartment in April. Oh, if wow. I go back 12 years, yeah. I moved into a new space. Like oh, wow. I've moved yeah. a lot, yeah. but, sure, but, sure. Wow. but there's difference in moving of places that you're living and places that are home. Oh, okay. Okay. So I'm, I've been in okay. transit for the past four years and I'm finally living in a space where I am home. I mm. feel grounded. What's yeah. really interesting too is um, the day of your birthday is mm -hmm. when that time Lord kicks in. Right, and right. The day of my birthday this year, you know, yeah. there's a lot of, because let's, we can also talk about what the fourth house is. So okay. this is what I do in private. This right. is also when you have family over, I've been wanting to have a, host a dinner party for the past four years mm. i am literally in the process of working that out nice. um nice. you know nice. small intimate gathering but i'm celebrating my home and also the ruler of leo is the sun and a big part of that is our creativity and our our right. artistry a lot you know a lot of charts that i've i've pulled i i have a lot of artist friends yeah. and it's really amazing to see the impact of leo and a fucus actually we'll get into that later mm -hmm. but um, mm -hmm. my home has always been full of art family I've always been extremely unique and eclectic, and that's where that um, Aquarian vibe comes in, right? Mm -hmm. um, I like a mishmash of different styles that really bring it together. Mm -hmm. And then I've also had been very in, uh, used light fixtures. Light has been an important, um, I mm. think it's uh, called Huga in Sweden or something like that. Where Huga, yeah. I believe the that's winter the festival of, of well-being and warmth, you know? Right, and they use yeah. lights. Yeah. So I would always have lanterns or, mm. um, I don't know if you can see, but Christmas lights. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, so, yeah, and yeah. I've always, astrology found me, um, yeah. and now, once that seed got planted, that's when you and I met in 2020. Oh, um, my whole life changed yeah. as it should, you know. Um, oh, it does. Astrology changes. Yeah. Well, and it, and it really showed me how to interact. Yeah. With, and oh, and so cool. let's talk about how you and I can compare and contrast because oh, sure, sure. where yeah, I'm, I'm in a fourth house mm -hmm. period, Let's get, my, you let's get my chart up. Are in a tenth house perspective. Right. I am 46 years old, which would be from my Aquarius ascendant if we go 48, 47, 46. Or no, I'm I'm thinking about it wrong, aren't I? Am I in a So you would go backwards? So you would 36. go 45. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, you you would go. Um, so right now you're in your tenth house. Right now I'm in I'm in a tenth house. Yeah, because forty six is almost forty eight. Right. Oh, I see. I was a little. I was wrong about it. Wouldn't reset at age twelve. It would reset at age thirteen. You go around to twelve. So thirteen is like that reset. So I. I was a little oh, confused. Oh, good point. Yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah. Was, that's a great catch. So you're right. You go through all 12 houses. Right. But so, remember, your ascendant starts at zero. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. That orients me. That orients me, right? But then, yeah, so when you do get around there, it would if your ascendant is zero, it would be the 12. So it would be the 12, and so it resets at 24. 12, 24. 36. Well, then 
okay, so if it resets at 36 and I'm 46, that's a 10th house here. That makes sense. First house, 10th house. Okay. So Neptune and my midheaven are here in Scorpio Fucus. And it's interesting because Neptune midheaven is a, is a common signature of people who use astrology. And a lot of astrologers have that signature. Neptune at the midheaven is like a big, like astrology found me and it'll find you if, if Neptune's at your midheaven. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in my midheaven, but I have it in Scorpio in my seventh house. Oh, cool. cool and right. what I love right. is the imagery that we use of Neptune, because if you yeah. look at like Shiva, for example, yeah, the that Triton symbol, That's a, you look at Neptune, the Greek version of Neptune, hmm. he has that Triton rod. Yeah. Right. Hmm. So um, the symbolism is, is quite amazing. Now I, um, We'll get to Neptune in just a second, but I use older. So the so you would look to Mars, right? First, before we get into all this, I, I just, that was sort of a side note. So the first way we go is rulership. And if you're looking at it in Hellenistic terms, then we have rulership by Mars. And, and, and guess this, this who's is hanging out with Mars? Let's Before we even move on. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. You break it down. You break so, so first you're going to look at Mars and the house that it's sitting in, Gemini. which is your fifth house. Right. So it's eighth, right? The rulership of your 10th house mm -hmm. from that 10th house mm, is in the eighth eight. house. Right. <laughs> we're going to get right. into that in a minute. So, so this is, now we're doing like Vedic things. So that is part of, this is very much like, it's very much like the Dasha system, except they use North node and South node. And it's very much, if they're counting this, where rulers are from the house and they're doing, they're doing those formulas. This, did that bleed in from the Vedic or did that? I, I possibly, well, the way I look at it is um, the teachers who really started this knowledge and uh i can that's a whole nother discussion because um mm -hmm. i look at it from an atlantean and yeah i mean if we're lost in the mist of time if we're lost in like genuine antiquity i don't think it's helpful to be like let's take this back to hipparchus or something that's right so right so um just for to keep it mm -hmm. Kind yeah, let's keep it. Let's see. <laughs> right, exactly. Really? So, really? Um, but I also do use the Vedic technique of aspects. Oh, okay. So each planet has certain aspects, but because Mars is sitting in the same house with Jupiter, mm -hmm. even though they're not in a tight conjunction, right? They're still hanging out. It's like if you have someone Conjunct in your house, they're just in another room, but they're still in your house, right? Conjunct there's by sign. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. There's conjunctions by degree and conjunctions by sign. Yeah, Mars and Jupiter, regardless of the degree between them, are certainly sharing Gemini. So I hear what you're saying. And then the Vedic looked very similarly at that, too. So we see Mars with Jupiter. And that's nice. It's been, it's been a sort of a... That's interesting because I, I mean, I would immediately go to Pluto as the ruler of, of, of uh, Scorpio Fucus, but that, that's okay. I'm not here to debate ancient versus modern rulership. That's not it. I'm just surprised because it has been a little bit Jupiterian year where it hasn't been like a hasn't been like an obsessive Pluto North Node year. Like oh, I'm just getting started, honey. Let me okay. let me break it down even more so because let's take a <laughs> look at do. what based on the aspects of the planets from the Vedic perspective, again, I use Hellenistic and Vedic principles on the true sky. Okay. What's happening to Scorpio currently in our modern sky? They are both being actively aspected per the Vedic plan planetarian aspects. Mm -hmm. Jupiter has a fifth, seventh, and ninth aspect from itself. So okay. currently, Jupiter is sitting in Taurus with our right. sun. Right. So you are having a direct aspect on the on your current Lord right now. Mm. Then from the ninth, Mars has a very unique aspect. It has a third, fourth, fifth, seventh, eighth, and ninth aspect. 
So you are not only having a seventh aspect of Jupiter on Scorpio right now, mm -hmm. you also have a Mars ninth aspect on Jupiter. I mean, excuse me, on Scorpio. On Scorpio, right. So Scorpio is having a massive, in the past, I want to say, year and a half, Mm. Scorpio has been going through a massive transformation. Your ruler today mm -hmm. is connecting with the North Node. So let's take a look at where your North Node sits. Yeah, Your yeah. North Node is, right, because this is all going to impact, which is mm -hmm. sitting with Pluto, which is sitting with your sun. And, Pl and Pluto transiting is right, is right here over my moon so right right, right. retrograde it is, it is. <laughs> approaching the second contact i i like to think of that as when pluto kind of backs up puts it in reverse and like runs over you again I, I exactly you. and i always look <laughs> at the house feel, behind yeah. where it is because that's the one that's getting the cleansing yeah, right because pluto's yeah. all pluto's all about always the cleanse, deep always and, the cleanse, so. and you know um yeah i'm and where our south, check this out, we can even get, mm -hmm. let's go even deeper. Sure. Where Pluto is currently sitting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in Virgo is where the south node, so right now your nodes are reversed. Yes, you yes, I'm Virgo. in a nodal half return. Here yeah. is the transiting south node and here is transiting north node. That's right. Here's so transiting Pluto. Where's Mars? I lost Mars. He moves too Mars fast. Mars is yeah. currently in Pisces. Thank you. That's right. Up. With with the node, with North Node. Excellent work. Today is the actual, like, I don't typically exact like exact. to do exacts because, you no, know. It's, it's never exact. It it's, is. I mean, exactly. it, it is exact, but, but the, act, the activity that's reflected at ground level is almost never. Exactly. So imagine, like, um, I don't know. I'm a Star Trek nerd. So. Yeah you know when they're talking about the core that runs the ship okay and whenever that core you know like captain kirk had to go in and pick that back into alignment right. do you know what i mean that that i'm not a, i'm not a star trek nerd but i understand that a ship is driven by a core and the captain right. Kirk had to kick it a couple of times I, yeah I can and believe he you. had to expose himself to radiation uh, die yeah. then he got rebirthed right uh, so anyway the way the energy with the north node works and the south node works is the south mm -hmm. node sucks up energy and the mm -hmm. north node because they're one they're one being who was decapitated per the vedas right okay? right right and mm -hmm. so when we're looking at energy the south node sucks in the energy from the past mm -hmm. and the north node ex Bans the energy in the future. Okay. So you having this nodal shift mm -hmm. is almost like a complete inner core reversal mm -hmm. of your processes. So you're mm -hmm. so yeah. not only and we can let's talk about Scorpio. Scorpio, sure. a lot of people, we're just gonna say this. Scorpio is extremely complex, but yeah. this is where in ancient pre-dynastic Egypt, mm -hmm. where Sobek and Serket, Serket was the goddess of healing and magic. She, mm -hmm. what, how, she was crowned with the scorpion. Mm -hmm. She would take the sting of the scorpion. She was the one that would mm -hmm. breathe life into you mm -hmm. after you've been bitten by a venomous animal. So through the venom, mm -hmm. they would heal through that. Um, right. It's always the Scorpio narrative through the venom, like mastering the venom by learning. And that's and that's the Ephucus, that's the Ephucus component to, to this that stands on the tail and and and, and masters that's big part of the story. I love that. Thank you. Ser Serket? Serket, and yeah. So she is um we're talking pre-dynastic because Sobek was the, the crocodile god right. that um, I believe it was in Heliopolis. Um, so this was 
before um, the Ptolemaic period. So mm -hmm. this was, we are actually closer to um, the Ptolemaic period than we would be, because it would be even like 5,000 years before the Ptolemaic period. Yeah, we're closer to the Ptolemaic period than the Ptolemaic period is to that pre-dynastic era is what is what you're is what you're exactly about. thank you because and and when i say for, i'm using these times extremely loosely because we oh, really yeah. don't know we don't know we don't know yeah i mean i'm not i'm not an institutional academic guy that likes to pretend i know no and know. even those people don't know it's, it's no that's what i'm saying they they just pretend they know they just, yeah yeah so <laughs> like i just love the not knowing because that's yeah that yeah. like then okay yeah right so yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. why i get into like arguments so basically for you yeah yeah you read my mind so what what where does that leave me like if i know that it's a a scorpio a fucus perfection year whether i'm looking at i mean where what do i what do i do with that like for people so, watching who are so like i can count to 12 i know my chart what, what do i do with this so what i like to tell people and this is the message that I have to everybody. Right before you know your birthday's coming, follow the moon cycle. We plant seeds on the new moon. Mm. Seeds come into fruition on the full moon. So on the new moon of your birthday, meditate, look deep in your heart, mm -hmm. and ask yourself what you would like to accomplish that year. Mm -hmm. Write it down. On the day of your birthday, meditate. Mm. Light a candle because our actually our mm. birthday tradition of putting a candle and blowing it out and making a wish come from the Hellenistic period. I love okay, that. that's it, amazing. It, that's why that. cakes were round because it was for the moon and it was for the lunar goddess. Beautiful. Then. I love that. Thank and you. and we could have a whole discussion on that. So yeah. that's why it's critical on the day of your birthday, you light whether you eat cake or not, whatever you do, but light a candle. Interesting. Tell yourself how much you love yourself. Mm. Blow out that candle with that intention. Don't tell anybody about it because that's mm -hmm. where the magic is, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then if you happen to know your chart, Mm -hmm. Start journaling. It doesn't have to be, you know, everybody has different aspects of journaling, but, and then look at the theme of that mm -hmm. year. For me, it's all about celebrating home, family. For you, it's going to be about your exterior life, your coworkers, mm -hmm. what your co, yeah. like, right, where do you work? But also, there's a lot of, um, we could get into what the tenth house is, but let's leave that mm -hmm. for another. Call. But for you, you're going through a massive transformation yeah, and personal, big personal transformation this year with Pluto over my moon. Thing. Inevitable, but it's interesting that it's a Pluto related to the the uh, Scorpio Fucus because I I I I mean, with all due respect to ancient rulership, I have a really hard time with Mars. I get the association. I get the. Uh, I get they're very compatible. So I, I shouldn't have a problem. But I'm like, I don't know. It just uh, it's just an old habit. It's just, well, think, a little perspective on yeah. um, the sky was much different back then, pre Christianity. Mm -hmm. um, so baptism is actually predates. Oh yeah. Christianity. Yeah, yeah, yeah it does. And in the Hellenistic mm -hmm. period they had temples mm -hmm. it was the baptisms specifically happened in a temple in the shape of an octagon mm -hmm. dedicated to the god mars mm -hmm. so scorpio mm -hmm. was before our current calendar right. was in the eighth month due to the julian calendar mm. that's why you know 
October, Octo. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. why a lot of people associate um, mm -hmm. October with eight house types of things. But mm -hmm. when we added the Julian calendar, it really changed things. So, we, uh, and that's a whole nother conversation. Uh, that's another one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But that's uh, why, like, yeah. um, like that water component of Scorpio being the hidden water. So now you're tapping into your hidden water. Oh yeah. It's, a, it's been, it's been all about the unacknowledged. Yeah. This year. Exactly. Our, Our subconscious body. flow, yeah. right? Yeah. It's true. It's true. Everything under the surface, like nothing from, from the outside. I don't think even some of my friends would be like, oh, I don't, I don't know. You don't seem like you're going through, you know, profound uh, personal transformation, but uh, no, it's been, but it's, it's been the theme starts, of this year. It starts underground, and actually, once you see it on the exterior, mm -hmm. that's when you're actually done. Mm, yeah, from, yeah, and yeah. starting a whole new cycle, obviously, from, from a Scorpio point of view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if yeah, you think about it like this, too, you were closing, you're getting closer to closing out a 12 year cycle. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, I see that. And I like to journal where I was this time 12 years yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. I'm going to make that a birthday tradition because now that I have something beyond just like a solar return, um, you know, the, the because the combination of, of solar return and, and, and Time Lord, uh, any number of there's. So we, we're talking about uh, annual perfections. Is that correct? Okay, Correct. like in, in the astronomical, astrological lexicon, these are perfections. This isn't like Time Lord nonsense. But the Time Lord, Time Lord is a translation of the Greek. What the Greeks called this was Time Lord techniques. Correct. So l learning which body governed a period of time. Correct. Um, and then, and then, and there's a, there's a lot. There's so much that we we can't even get into today. But yeah, the um, angles of the house: were you born at night? Were you born in the daytime? Right. Sect is, becomes a rulership, and then the angle of that house compared to your lots. We can get lost in that sauce, my. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's, <laughs> see, that's why that's why this always kind of put me off. I I felt I felt that the complexity of it was just daunting and. Then I had a reading with you over my own uh, my own time, Lord uh, stuff and those cycles and seasons and and it is it was it was very, very impactful. It was very mind blowing, and I like to see uh, systems that work in the ways that the Vedic systems work, but they're just totally different. It was so fascinating because, and one of the things I learned subsequently was that each each house or each sign rather is is understood to govern like different numbers of years of life based on the the ruler and how and 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 in geez in the in the vedic they have similar like maturity planetary maturity like they'll they'll say uh what is it? jupiter sun moon mercury mars venus saturn no, Venus. And even Rahu. Rahu and then they use the nodes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and then, but they govern different amounts of time. So a Rahu Dasha is like, uh, I believe, something like 13 or 18 years. But uh, but uh, 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 there are shorter periods of time, planetary cycles. And this, and this takes into account, these Time Lord techniques take into account some stuff like that. And you had a book. And that's a good resource. But you had a video. You sent me a video. It's like a four and a half hour video by Chris Brennan, who I adore, but I'm not going to watch four and a half hours, not all at once. So I I, I did watch there's the first book. half hour. And I want to say there's going to be some links in the description. So that we'll link that book, Hellenistic Wait. Astrology by Chris Brennan. And we'll link this video that you sent me. We'll link, you just started a project, didn't you? You just started, I uh, you started a YouTube yeah. channel. I'm, I'm always up in the lab working on something. So what we understand in an astronomy perspective is, right. yes, we have an annual year, which can relate to these annual perfections. Right. But we also have 
what's the only way I know how to say it is the great year. We are mm -hmm. currently in the Pisces time frame. They roughly yeah. run from 25 to 26 thousand years. And you will know that because of where the sun sits during the spring equinox. Right. Because our sun sets in the constellation of Pisces during um, currently, right. we're heading into the, so we are in the Pisces age, right? For right. lack of okay. a better term. So just for anyone who's not following all that, on the spring equinox, this is an ancient marker. This is how we decide what's going on. In the On the spring equinox in the northern hemisphere, the sun rises like here. This is the point that is the stars behind the sun are Pisces, and we are in the age of Pisces for about 700 more years, I'm sorry to tell everyone, until we enter the age of Aquarius. Um, and that... Because it runs the opposite of our... It does. It runs. It runs counterclockwise. There, there's always one going this way. There's all. It's like cogs in a wheel, right? Where they're oh, always no, like yeah. the Mayan calendar. So oh what's goodness! Really Which one? <laughs> right. Well, that's what I'm trying <laughs> yeah, to say. They, I know. I know. I get it. They all. They were cogs in a wheel, and they all fit together. And they. That's, so that's, that's why we are in the times we're in because it's the when you're getting ready to end one cycle and start. There's a disruption. That's when we yeah, when yeah. we can look at the dark ages. That was where we were moving from an age of Saturn mm. into this age of Pisces. Interesting. Right? Um did I have that right? Age I think I think we moved from an age of Mars. That from correct. Aries, from correct. Aries we were in, and Christ. and there and it's funny because Judaism was linked to the age um of, of Mars. Air. There's a, yeah, there's a big air. Mars and there's a big Saturn. They still, um, they still use the ram's horn, the shofar, shofar in their in their ceremonial. Yeah, it's very it's very they honor the ram. And their um, Sabbath is Saturday, which is Saturn's day. Saturn's day. So there's a big there is a Saturnian component. So my whole thing is maybe there what I'm trying to research right now is the correlation of when the age begins just like us right on our birthday so mm -hmm. we have to look at where your ruler's sitting maybe saturn was sitting in a very unique perspective maybe saturn was sitting in the age of aries right. who knows i'm still fucking around and finding out and yeah um, that's the that scientific method that's that's a time honored that's the, <laughs> that's a time honored technique yeah. So, um, but I am currently saying, okay, well, if we have an annual perfection, yeah. as above, so below. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So whatever's happening in the sky also happens within us. And so mm -hmm. if we have an annual perfection, there's going to be a greater, and I think it has to do with our birthdays, right? So I'm in my fifties. Mm -hmm. So the number five is associated with Mercury. Dep mm -hmm. There are variations, I will say. But no, that's one, okay. That's okay that I've been following is like a Vedic perspective. And the number five is attributed to Mercury, which is, uh, um, so I'm, I'm trying to, I'm collecting the data. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and that takes time. Yeah. And, um, so to be continued, my friend. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. They, they, in the Vedic, in the Vedic, I just pulled up in some notes here. So I'm going to, I'm going to, um, these they, they have a concept in the Vedic of planet maturity. Have you ever come across that? Okay, sure do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's and that's what I was making. <laughs> What's that? My Rahu maturity was a blessing. Oh yeah, <laughs> my Rahu. I mean, I think my chart's still up on the screen. My Rahu maturity was uh, let let Pluto go, and that's at age say, forty-two. Look, have all those when I started in the same house. Yeah, <laughs> that's when we met. That's when we met. You met me when when my Rahu finally matured. So before before that, I, you know, it was that Rahu Pluto. That's a it's, it's a it's a ride. It's a it's a strong mm -hmm. ride. Mine um, sits with Mars in my eighth house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then they have an idea about houses, that houses mature, and that you're in a sort of ninth house stage. You start house, you start life with a ninth house stage, and you're just in ninth house stage from age 21, no, till age 24, from age 1 to 24. 
that's that's something I've heard. And then you're in a tenth house phase, twenty five and twenty six, twelfth house, and it goes on until you're in. It goes all the way around to eighth house, which is sixty six years and onward. So they'll 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 isolate like so. At forty six, I'm in a fifth house maturity age, which is forty six to fifty one. So I'm so here. Let's see. Here's my and it's really poignant too, and that's why I think it's important that we honor the techniques yeah. of our ancients yeah. because we're all we're just piggybacking on the work that they did. Oh, sure, sure. You said it. Um, in fact, I think I think that uh, you know the work that they that they did. It gives it gives it gives accurate you know, it gives helpful and accurate results. And they're using different systems, you know, the, the whole astrology lineages that came to us through the Greco and through the Egyptian, they, um, they have some similarities with the Vedic, but they, they evolved along such different lines that I think anytime we can, anytime we can build a bridge between those two worlds, you know, then then we're then we're winning. Honestly, I think that's important work. So. And so, what I've been trying to really do the past um, three years is, first, I found everything that was similar. Yeah. Applied it to the true sky. I've been different finding the differences, but there's more commonalities. And even when I go to you know the pre dynastic, because I use um I do rune readings. I I. Yeah. I, because they're all the same. Um, yeah. The methodology is different, but that that energy. No, there. no, I know what you mean. It's not all the same, but it, but it, but it's all. There's like I said, there's just one thing happening, and it gets encoded in different ways in different alphabets and different tarot and astrology. Tarot, tarot and runes are probably you could probably find pretty precise parallels. But I, I digress. I read That's, both of those actually. I'm, yeah. I'm a, I'm an adept tarot reader. I'm, I do okay. rune readings. Um, but I also have learned um, one of the things that I would like to send your followers off, like there is no spiritual bypassing. Mm -hmm. All we can do is present the information. It is up to you, the individual, to choose what energy you want to work with and what you want to decide. No one can do the work for you, my friend. But who, we can tell you about chocolate milk all you want, but until you take that first drink of chocolate milk, you will never understand that chocolate yeah. milk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, nonetheless, you know, without hearing about chocolate milk, you know, people Listen. hardly get interested in it. So it's great. It's great. Even at any level, people can engage in this, whether like, you know, I... I'm kind of coming out of this conversation wishing that I that I that I could have like got more of the whole thing and know what to do with it. But this isn't like that. This isn't the kind of thing you can just watch an hour dialogue on and like get the technique. So we'll have some links in the description below to some like very in-depth, very in-depth instructional videos with a lot of detail, a lot of uh, good uh, instruction from. Chris Brennan uh, who, of the Astrology Podcast. He's one of Demetra George's, Demetra George's students and um, probably studied with a bunch of other people too. He's a wizard. Anything else before before you go? You have a you have a YouTube channel. Plug your plug your YouTube channel. Oh Tell us yes, a little it's Cat's um, uh, Oracle Shop. I just uh, just started. Um, the intention of this shop is to provide tools to let everybody know we're all magicians. Mm -hmm. We are all oracles of energy. And I, my intention for the channel is to provide tools so that we can learn how to tap into our own inner oracle, which is our intuition. Yeah. And, and touching, teaching us how to learn the magic that we're all born with. Yeah, because we're, yeah, we're yeah, all wizards. Good. It's just that's we've it. been caught up in this world that says, "No, you're not," but we are. So let's get weird and let's get wild and let's let's be creative yeah. and use it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyday, everyday magic, the magic in everyday life. Sort of a kind of one of my favorite approaches. Not a big, uh, not a big systematic or like uh, orthodox kind of golden dawn with. The, 
kind of pentagonal banishings, but just hedge magic, just dirt magic, just everything's magic. This conversation is is a flow of of energy that is going to catalyze uh, you know magic in the world. So, and if I, I may make a statement, mm -hmm. magic is quantum physics. It's energy, and it's sure. being quantified now in the sign i work in the medical field so mm -hmm. i'm also understanding that there's a scientific aspect to this and we have to understand that the people who are in the research fields they don't know everything's just a theory because the reality is nobody knows so why don't we just Man. open our minds and get into our feeling body and so yeah let's let's play with energy yeah 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 i think that's a perfect place to to wind it down and i thank you i thank you so much for just talking about this and how how um y you know i just encourage people to uh just figure out what what you're you're in right now and see if the theme of the year and then trace it back you know you or or going to like really crucial years in your life like maybe maybe so so just with the rulership and some of the planetary placements just see if you can get the flavor and and have fun have fun it's it's a journey and there's there's room for play yeah so um That's i love i love connecting with you on this i love the direction you you took it in because so many people are so dead serious and they want to be predictive and accurate and that's nice that has i mean that's cool. That's cool. But but there's something more here, and it's uh, discovering our agency, discovering our connection to the bigger picture, and how to grow that connection, and how to increase our agency. So, love I it. Think, I think on that, that note, is, yeah, that's beautiful, beautiful. Oh, my thank friend. you, thank you. Just sort of active listening, kind of summing up everything you were you were presenting, but um. Let's wind it down, my friend. Let's uh, let's uh, let's end let's end this uh, recording. Is there anything? Is there anything on your mind, like dangling? No, I just want everybody to love yourself exactly where you are, because if you're not exactly where you are, you can't get to where you want to be. It's nowhere else, my friends. It's right there. Where it's you right be. here, right now. This is yeah. where life is happening yeah. in the present moment. Beauty, beauty, beauty. Thank you so much. I'm going to stop the recording. Thank you. All right. Thanks for having um, me. Yeah, be sure to read all the description below for a lot of great links and information about some of these projects we talked about. And all ciao right. to your listeners. <laughs> yes, yes. Ciao, everybody. Um, thank you and goodbye. Thanks for having me.